Hey guys, and welcome back to a brand new Airsoft video. Now, as you can probably see already, today we are doing something slightly different. Now, this is a topic I have had highly requested for quite some time, and some of the subjects and topics we're going to discuss today are definitely ones I've had a lot of questions about recently, so hopefully you guys enjoy the video. Now, as you can probably see from the title already, today we're not only going to be discussing the equipment that you usually see me run in my skirmish videos, but also the extra equipment you have to take to a milsim, because of course a milsim involves far more equipment than your standard one day skirmish. Now, I have to say straight away, I am no milsim expert. There are players out there who played milsim for far longer than myself. I am still a very relatively new milsim player. But today I just want to give you my perspective as a new player, some of the equipment I took that I didn't need, some stuff that I did need, my overall experiences because I've had a lot of questions recently about how do I get involved with Milsim, what do I need for Milsim, so hopefully my perspective as a new Milsim player will help you guys out. So starting off with probably one of the largest and also probably one of the most important pieces of kit if you are going to a Milsim and that is of course your weapon and all of its extra parts. Now this gun box right here is actually brand new to me, this is a Pelican gun box. Previously I was using a gun bag that could hold two rifles in. This is new to me, I haven't even cut into it yet, it actually comes with pluck foam where you kind of draw around your weapon and this has actually got little laser cut squares into it and you can just pull the foam apart to make a shape and then fit the weapon into it. But my TM recoil which comes back to me on Monday after having a lot of upgrades done to it, that is what's going to be in this so until I get it back I haven't actually made any shapes into this box yet. What I do have in front of me is my secondary weapon. Now, one of my biggest pieces of advice for going to a milsim is, of course, take two primary weapons if you can. If you do have two, take two with you because the worst imaginable situation is getting to a milsim for 36 hours, being there maybe an hour and a half and your main weapon breaking, and then for the another 34 hours, whatever, you don't have a primary weapon. So if you're going to a long event, always prepare for the worst and if you can take as many weapons as you physically can with you because there's just less chance of things going down. So for this next event Operation Crypt Kicker which is in a week's time from now the main weapon I will be running is my TM Recoil M4 SOC mod which is coming back from Kingdom of Airsoft this week with a load of new parts in it which I will be covering in a video very soon. So that's going to be my primary weapon. With that I will be running eight TM Recoil mid caps of course if you are going to a milsim, you do have to have mid-cap magazines. Now these TM ones are the 82 round magazine ones. Now, for some, mid, uh, some milsim events, mid-cap magazines can just be 140 rounders, 80 rounders, whatever. For say, CAG events like Operation Eagle Fury very, very soon, that actually has a 30 round capacity for mid-cap. So these TM ones are perfect for that because you can actually open them and flick a little switch and these switch to 30 round mags, so they have a realistic capacity. But for Operation Crypt Kicker, I will be running these at 82 round. I have eight of these, so I carry seven on me, one in the weapon. Now, as my secondary backup weapon, I'll actually be running this, which you've seen me use a few times before. In fact, I actually used it in the last mill sim. This is a Tipman M4. This is a HPA setup, which was sent to me by the awesome guys down at JD Airsoft. So I will leave links to this in the description below. This, of course, runs from an air pressure tank that I have in my backpack which means it has a nice blowback system, it's a nice piece of kit, and for this, I'm actually running PTS EPM 140 round mid cap magazines. Again, I have six of these, so I can carry enough on me. Now, these are 140, as I said, so these are still a little bit more than those, so I have less of these. These have a good little system on them where, when they're actually full, you have a little indicator on the window there, so when you're using these in the game and you pull them out, you can actually tell which magazines are full and which are half full or even empty pretty quickly. So I'm a big fan of these magazines, they're very sturdy and they feed excellent with the uh, Tipman M4. Now, of course, I am running the Tipman M4, it means I have to take a gas tank with me, but all of that I will get to later on. Because the TM Recoil, again, is an electric weapon, and I don't want to run out of power halfway through the event, for my TM, I actually run these. These are the New Pro uh, 7.4 LiPo batteries, because I have had it uh, converted to uh, Mini Tamiya. I'm actually going to be taking six of these to the event, because you can never have enough batteries. Again, you don't want to get a couple of hours in and run out of power. And because these kind of things do lose a little bit of power in the cold, and if you go to a millstone at somewhere like Seni Bridge or any other kind of fibula base, you don't have any access to electricity, so don't be taking your uh, charger with you and think you can just charge it in between fights. You will need to have as much power as you can with you, so six of these is probably enough to do. It's probably a little bit overkill, really, because unlike a skirmish where you're kind of firing non-stop for the entire six or seven hours, a millstone, you may have a one-hour firefight and break off and not fight for a couple of hours, so even though you're there for 36 hours, you're definitely not shooting at 36 hours. So six of these batteries, 
Uh, it's definitely enough, but again, it's better to be safe than sorry. So next up, we're going to take a look at something I know you guys will be interested to see, and that is, of course, my battle kit. The stuff I'm wearing whilst I'm running around and whilst I'm playing. So we have my plate carrier, my battle belt, and my helmet setup. So to begin with, the biggest piece of kit on the table, this is the Warrior Assault DCS. Now, I've ran this for a couple of months now, big fan. I previously ran the Warrior Assault Rickass plate carrier, which is a little bit bigger, but I switched out to this. This is more comfortable, a little bit more easy on the shoulders, the shape of it. So this is a good plate carrier, and I'm glad I switched it out. Now, as you can see on the front, I'm actually running seven M4 pouches, five on the center, two on the cummerbund on the edge. As you can see at the moment, I'm running my Tokyo Marui M4 82 round mid cap magazines with Ranger plates on, which makes them easy to pull in and out of my uh, plate carrier. As you can see, I've got little bungees on here to try and hold everything in place. They're a little bit tight because of that Ranger plate, but it still works well. Everything is nice and secure. Now, on the right hand side, as you can see, I actually have a pistol pouch, which I run a pretty cheap and nasty little uh, mid cap speed loader here, which again, if you're using mid caps, is key. I am going to get one of those M12 um, speed sidewinder things that can load a mag in like a second or whatever pretty soon. But it's always key to have a spare one with you. So I carry that in a pistol pouch on the front. Now through the uh, shoulder harness I run this. This is my sling for my weapon. This is a Faro concept sling. Pretty basic. It's just a strap system that I run through the shoulder so it's not rubbing against your neck or anything. It's just a simple lock system with a little cover on it so you don't scratch your weapon. I used to always end up with a scratched weapon from the metal rubbing against the weapon. So you pull that piece of material down and everything is good. Now, talking about Ferro Concept, if I lift the plate carrier up, you will see my dangler pouch dangling there as it's so aptly named. Now this is just Velcroed inside. If I open up the cummerbund of my plate carrier, this is just Velcroed, if you can see that, Velcroed onto the inside. So this pouch, this pouch just Velcroes on and just sits there nice and easily. Now, I'm a big fan of this pouch. It's lightweight, it doesn't get in the way, it protects the lower part of your stomach. There's nothing more painful than getting shot in the lower part of your stomach. So this is a nice little bit of added protection actually. Now, I will show you now how I run my pouches and what I run in them. So, in the dangler pouch, I have all my grenade stuff. So I can get to this very easily if I open it up. In here, I have things like a um, little pouch, which is full of the, the, uh, the actual 209 primers. I have spare grenade pins for my VTG, the priming tool for my VTG, um, just a lot, a lot more, uh, some small Allen keys and stuff, which I actually use for other equipment. More uh, grenade pins, all the stuff that I need for my grenades lives in this little pouch, which is very easily accessible. So again, I split things down into different kind of categories so I know where to get them. My right hand side of the plate carrier, I have a big admin pouch in here, or a big, big uh, utility pouch. In here, I have a bag of BBs. Now, I created this myself with it. Well, I bought the small bag and then I zip tied a bottle lid to it so you can easily screw that on and screw it off and be able to pour BBs in. And in this, I also just run my batteries. Obviously, I don't just leave them in the gun box. I carry a couple of them on me. So when we're in the middle of a game, as you saw in my last Milson video, in the middle of a firefight, I can switch out batteries if I need to. Now, on this side, on the inside, I also have this piece of equipment here. I have my Bofang uh, radio system. So this sits in the radio pouch on the inside. And as you can see by all these cables that are all over the place at the moment, I then have a pretty simple push to talk system, which is connected to the front of my plate carrier here. And then this piece goes into my ear and I can communicate and hear people nice and easily. So that's the comm system that I will be running in the near future at the upcoming events. Now, if I just slip this back into the bag, I can show you the other side of my plate carrier. I have a, another pouch on the edge of the cummerbund. This is another utility pouch. And in this, I run a few different things. This is a range finder, which I only ever run at Milsom events or will be. This was sent to me by the awesome guys at Suaku. I think it's pronounced. This is a pretty cool range finder. Now, this is mainly used for snipers and stuff, but we are out in the woods and we're you know, kind of keeping an eye on what people are doing. Knowing what distance they are away, especially if you know the kind of capabilities of your weapon is pretty key. Or if you do have a sniper with you and you can spot for him and give him range distances with this, it's pretty good. It also gives you wind distances and stuff, wind speeds, sorry, so you can actually try and calculate stuff like that. Again, you wouldn't want to use that or need to use that at a skirmish, but for a milsim that is handy. And then in here, I also have my Gerber kind of Leatherman style multi-tool. 
This has come in very, very useful for events, as you can imagine. It's just your standard kind of uh, Leatherman style, but this is a Gerber one. Um, Multi-tool, you've got knives, blades, screwdrivers, saws, you know, everything you need. Your classic uh, multi-tool there. So that is very key for a mill sim. That uh, sits in that pouch. And on the rear, I have a cargo pack. Now in here, as you can see, I have a tube going around to the front. I have a hydration unit here so I can have water in there. This has got a large uh, bladder pack that just sits uh, nice and neatly inside the back of there. And of course, if I am, if I am running a Tipman, I have a uh, gas tank here that I can then uh, link up to the, to the rifle itself. And finally, moving back around to the front, I have my admin pouch. Now, a DCS doesn't usually come with an admin pouch. This I actually took from my Rickass before I sold it. I like having this because of the big Velcro patch that allows me to put my patches on the front. I have my RAID patch, my PTS patch. And being an admin pouch, it has a big admin slot where I can put maps, notes, anything I might need for a mill sim. Or in this case, there is just a, uh, a few BBs in there. So that is my plate carrier. So moving on, we have my battle belt. Now, again, this is made by Warrior Assault. This is the Warrior Assault battle belt. I picked this up secondhand and then kind of put it together myself. You can buy these with all the pouches already on, but I built this together myself. So moving around this way, on the right hand side, I have my Warrior Assault Universal Locking Holster. It can pretty much hold any pistol. It locks them in, they can't fall out. There's a locking system on the trigger. So running around, your pistol is never ever gonna go anywhere. You press that with your thumb and it comes out nice and easily. Now the pistol I'm gonna be running at this event, uh, my primary one is this. This is the WE MMP. And I will be running it with, this is a little bit loose at the moment, need to tighten it up. Uh, red dot sight, which was custom, the custom mount was actually built for me or available on uh, Dave Customs Airsoft. So this looks pretty cool. I got a lot of comments about it in my previous gameplay video. I haven't had a chance to properly run it yet, but having a red dot sight like that on a pistol looks very, very, very cool. So I will be running this uh, at the next event. As I said, I need to tighten up a little bit. Um, so that all sits on my right hand side. Of course, I'm a right handed shooter, so I can grab that easily. Next to that, I have a Warrior Assault Smoke Grenade Pouch, which is the perfect size for a SWAT VTG grenade, which I have reviewed very recently in my grenade video. Moving around to the back, I have a Warrior Assault Medic Pouch. Now this is a fast release one. I can literally grab the leather there, undo that Velcro, and then it tears off. This is the big Velcro pad there on the back and front. Now this is a medic pouch, and it's a genuine medic, I mean, you know, a genuine setup for a medic pouch. In here I have, I'm not gonna get it all out now, but I have uh, bandages, plasters, all the stuff you would need uh, for a kind of light uh, emergency. Nothing, nothing. Uh, if you had a, a heavy trauma, this wouldn't be very useful, but a light medic kit. I just bought a mountaineering medic kit from Go Outdoors and just emptied it into here, basically. Not always key, but some mill sims, again, some of the CAG stuff, they do require everyone to carry their own personal medic kit just in case. But also, it does look pretty cool in the back of my plate carrier. Further around, we have my dump pouch. I get a lot of stick for not using my dump pouch often. I often just put the mags back in there because I'm, when I'm running around, they fall out the dump pouch, which is because I've got a pretty bad dump pouch. This is an uh, unbranded one at the moment. I need to start using it properly because the amount of times I pull out a magazine and it's an empty one because I put it back in my plate carrier. Um, but again, for the moment, I am running this. Round on the side here, I have nothing in it right now, but I have two um, pistol pouches. So if I am running uh, my pistol, I can put the, uh, let me get it out. The pistol mags all fit nice and neatly in there. And then finally on this side, I have, again, all warrior assault apart from the uh, dump pouch. 40, milli 40 millimeter grenade pouches. Now these work perfectly for SWAT VT, uh, for um, Concept Tactical TRMR grenades. Uh, I apologize. These are the multi-bang ones. Um, they've, they've got the adapt on the bottom so I can have a three shot grenade. Again, I've discussed these in length in a recent video. They have just brought out a new model TRMR, which I do have. Awesome grenade. If you do want to check out more about that, I will leave links in the description below. But for that, I just run two of them in these 40 mil grenade pouches. So that kind of concludes the, the setup I run for my battle belt. So then if I can put that out of the way, finally I have my helmet setup. Now again, I've done a whole video on this, so I won't go into too much detail. 
Uh, this is a new Pro Fast helmet. I've got a Brain Exploder mount on there so my GoPro is upside down at a nice angle. Counterweight bag at the back so I can put an external battery and I run this uh, GoPro lead right through. It gives me about 12 hours battery life. Taking all the padding out the inside because I run a real set, real steel Peltor Comtac XP headset. So of course, put these on, turn them on so I can hear myself. And if I had the padding on the inside of the helmet still, it probably wouldn't fit that well. But because of um, the leather band on this, it makes it comfy enough that I could just get this on. I can pull the straps down and that uh, is comfy enough as a system. So that is my helmet setup. Again, I've got an ATAC FG helmet cover on there, which I like because it's just basically green. So when I'm running any camouflage, you know, it doesn't clash. If I've got a multi-cam helmet cover and then, you know, Badlands camo on. Um, got a strobe light on there, distress light, sorry. I've got a strobe uh, box in the back. Got my RAO1 um, RAID call sign on there. PTS syndicate patch on there, which I get a lot of stick for. Why am I running an American flag? It's not what it is an American flag, but it's because I'm a PTS pro staff member. A funny little infidel patch there, and my blood type on the back. So that kind of is my helmet setup. Again, I have a full video on this, which I will leave linked in the description below. So next up, as I said, is my skirmish bag. This is all the kind of equipment in here that you'd probably just take to a normal skirmish. Now, the reason I break these up into different bags is because it just makes things easier to find. As I said, if you are playing a fibula site and you're inside a building, there's normally no access to electricity. So if it's in the dark, you're rooting around with just a torch and to find something, knowing which bag it is in makes it a lot easier. Rather than trying to find a bottle of BBs underneath your spare socks and clothes and food. Breaking it up always makes things easier to find. So I try and put all my skirmish stuff in this bag. Now this is the kind of stuff you'd expect to find in that. I have things like my gas, which I use for my pistols. I have my BB, which I normally decant into these kind of big bottles. These are Rocket uh, 2.5, uh, 0.2.5 gram Rocket BBs. These work really well. I buy these by the uh, 10 gram, 10 kilogram bag and then just decant them into these uh, little bottles that I can take to an event nice and easily. I then take things like my Phase Pro as I said. Now this is the Division 6 mask which has the soft side which makes it much easier to aim down sight. I wore this at the last event but this time I'm actually not planning on wearing it because wearing a mask like this for 36 hours is pretty uncomfortable. So I'm actually just going to be running a gum shield this time instead. I may have this with me and if we do get into a very close quarters firefight in a building, I can just bring it up from around my neck and just quickly put it over my face. But for the majority of the time, I will be running a gum shield just to protect my teeth instead. But all the same, this is a brilliant mask and it is highly recommended. It's far more comfy than your standard kind of cheap Chinese mesh mask, so great mask. Now with this, I run, uh, in this bag I also run spare gloves. These are some um, multi-cam mechanic gloves. I've never actually worn these before, they're just great to have as spares. The last thing you want is to get your hands and gloves soaked on the first day and then for the rest of the weekend have to keep putting on horribly wet gloves. So a spare pair of gloves is definitely something I would recommend. In here as well I have my iPro. Now again, seems to be the, uh, the case with everything. I take two pairs, if you can and you've got it, take two pairs of everything or if not more. Um, now usually these are the goggles you see me run at a skirmish. These are Bolly X800 goggles. Uh, now these are really good, they're full seal. Apart from they do well, they're full seal-ish. They have a little four millimeter gap that runs pretty much 360 degrees around the outside of the goggle, which is why I never ever have fogging issues. A lot of people comment on my videos saying, you never seem to have any fogging issue when you see the camera facing towards me. That's because that air vent around there just means the hot air that from when I'm breathing just goes in and then straight back out the top. So I never usually have any issues with fogging with these. Now these again come with uh, spare lenses. At the moment I have the slightly tinted lenses on, they come with uh, clear lenses and what they call HD lenses, which are these kind of yellow ones, uh, which I'm not a fan of. But again, I keep them with it because if these get cracked or damaged at an event, I've still got spares with me. Now, I use them for skirmishes, but I wouldn't recommend them for a milsim because again, at most milsims, once it starts, it's on for 36 hours or however long it is. So there's no safe area where you can take your goggles off. So even when you're sleeping, you have to have your eye pro on because someone could come into your building and shoot you in your sleeping bag. So you want to have something that's going to be comfortable for 36 hours. So for a milsim, I uh, recommend these which I've worn before. These are revision saw flies. These are um, ex-military ones. You can buy them on eBay. Uh, these are used by the military. And again, these come with multiple lenses. And because these are more just like a pair of sunglasses, they're far more comfy, you can sleep in them, but they still give you good protection. If I throw these on now, because of the side parts, some shooting glasses I always find leave you exposed on the side of your eyes, which is not something you want. These, as you can see, if I just sort of toggle down the side, 
There's no chance of getting hit from the sides. They're nice and comfy. They're ballistic, so they are, you know, they're good for airsoft. I took a direct hit on these at the last mill sim and they, they get me good. So these are what I would recommend. And again, just like those, these come with tinted lenses, which I've got there, which I wouldn't really recommend it sometimes because you go in a building, it's pitch black. You can't see anything with these on. But these also come with, if you buy them off eBay, you get yourself a clear pair, which I wore last time. They need a bit of a clean, a little bit mucky. And then again, the yellow style uh, HD, as they call them, uh, lenses, which again, I'm not really a fan of, but I keep them with me in case the two go down. I have a spare pair of lenses to protect my eyes. So they're the ones I'd recommend for a Milsim. These are the ones I'd recommend for a skirmish, but I'd take them both with me anyway. And then finally in this bag, is the fun stuff. Now, uh, the awesome guys down at Cloud9 have been kind enough for this event and the next one coming up to sponsor me with a lot of smoke and a lot of bang. So, as I've talked about my grenade video, if you haven't seen it already, I'll link it down below. Smoke grenades, thunder flashes, uh, ring pull smoke grenades, a lot of different equipment that I try and use at the events. You can't normally use at a standard skirmish if it's you know some indoor place and stuff. So. This is the stuff I have in my bag, is a lot of smoke and a lot of bang. So next up we have the equipment that goes into the bag that I referred to at the start as a kind of living bag or Milsim bag. This is more the kind of stuff you probably wouldn't need to take to your standard skirmish. Now this here is of course just a few samples of the stuff. I have more than this and I probably wouldn't take all of this at the same time for certain things. For example, the camouflage. Now the reason I have three sets in front of you here, uh, this is the M81 green camouflage that I will be wearing for Operation Crypt Kicker because I'm on the green team. Now, multicam does count as green for that event, but last time I wore that at that event, I was getting shot at by my own team. So I wanted something that was a lot more green so people knew which team I was on. Um, but I will be taking my Pencop Badlands camo as reserve because it's still a little bit of a mix between green and tan, but it's definitely, as you can see, more tan than the multicam. So, as I said, always have a reserve. If I slip over on the first day in a load of mud and get soaking wet, I don't want to be wearing wet clothes all weekend. So I will have a reserve camouflage, which is my Pencop camo for that event. But for other events, as I mentioned, the Operation Eagle Fury event, that's a little bit more strict, as I mentioned earlier on with the 30 round capacity magazines. For that event, they want all the special forces or the special forces support group to be wearing multicam, which makes sense. In a real combat situation, all the same forces are gonna be wearing matching kit. So for that event, you have to wear multicam. So this is why I've got it here in front of me. This is the kind of kit I will be wearing for events at CAG, things like Operation Eagle Fury. Now, as well as that, I have things like spare socks. I go for nice, thick hiking socks. I take about five pair of these with me because sometimes just swapping them in the middle of the, even in the hot summer's day, if you get sweaty and they get start to get a little bit damp, there's nothing that boosts morale more than a nice, warm, fresh pair of socks. In the morning, sticking them on will make you feel a thousand times better. So take as many nice, dry pairs of walking socks as you possibly can. As well as that, for events this time of year, especially in the winter, I like to take a Under Armour thermal shirt, which uh, sometimes can be a little bit too much if you're wearing this, a U-back, and then some kind of jacket you guys have seen. I will be linking my Milsim loadout video in the description. I also wear a Pencot uh, soft shell, um, not Pencot, sorry, Pentagon Grey Wolf soft shell jacket. It's a little bit overkill wearing this, a U-back, and that. But sometimes, if you just want to wear the U-back, this can keep you warm underneath. As well as that, I have some kind of padded um, thermal shorts, which are good as well. Sometimes if you just want to take your trousers off and just <laughs> not be walking around naked when you're trying to get your kit on and off nice and quickly at an event, having these kind of shorts with you is also a plus. As well as that, I have my main gloves I'll be wearing. These are the uh, Mechanics uh, Impacts uh, in Coyote Tan. They're a good pair of gloves. Now, as well as that, of course, we have my cooking equipment. Now, I actually use a pretty retro um, gas system. I have this little system here which the stand screws onto and then you can just you can just sit your tin on top with some boiling water and uh, cook yourself some food. Pretty retro, it's actually something my dad used when he was doing his mountain leader stuff years and years ago, but it doesn't fail you. I have spare gas there. I have uh, a little spare torch. This is a really cheap, I had it for years, little, I mean, it doesn't even light up now, but it's it works sometimes if you're trying to grab something quick inside your bag if you haven't you know got anything else to hand. Of course, you have your cutlery and stuff. This is just a little old mess tin stuff that I used to use. Now in here, I actually have, interestingly, there's actually a lot of BBs in here at the moment. Interestingly, I uh, have this, and this is a little foil bag that you can fill with water. I think it holds a couple of liters of water because this is something I was gonna mention next. Water is key. The last event, I took the big two liter bottles. I think I took eight bottles of that for, for uh, just a three day event because you cook with that. You may even wanna wash with that. You need to drink that. So having a lot of water with you is key. You 
can't stress enough how much water you need to take to these events. So I took eight last time, I think, and I think I went through them all because, as I said, you'll be using that for cooking as well. Now, as well as standard things like lighters, this is a little backup piece of kit I take, unless in case you lose your lighters or I do have some waterproof matches. I have this, which is just a simple sparking device, which if you are trying to light off the stove, it's nice and easy to do. Food-wise, um, my only samples I have to show you at the moment are these cooking samples. These are Wayfarer um, kind of ration pack things. At the moment, I've got pasta bolognese and meatballs and pasta. Now, these are very, very simple. You rip a little tiny hole in them, you sit them in there in the packet and let the water boil until it's nice and hot and then you just eat them out of the packet. They taste good, they're relatively cheap, about £3 each. Last time I took loads of these and only ate like two because I just wasn't really that hungry. I took loads of chocolate, even Haribo, things that just give you sugar nice and quick. Uh, I took some energy um, kind of yogurt things, these energy bars to try and kind of keep me on my feet. But if you do want a, a, a bit more of a wholesome warm meal, these things are quite good. You can get these from like Go Outdoors and stuff and they are very quick and easy to make. Now as well as that, finally, here we have a small sample of my sleeping stuff. This is a Four Seasons large sleeping bag. Now, I also take a roll mat. Some people take fold out beds and all sorts. I'm not too bothered about that. I've done a lot of camping in my time and sleeping on a concrete floor, just a thin roll mat doesn't really, doesn't really bother me. So I'll take a thin roll mat and then just a Four Seasons sleeping bag. Some events won't allow you to have anything less than a Four Seasons sleeping bag. So if you're gonna turn up with your little uh, Argos sleeping bag, they probably won't allow it because it can get very, very cold. So make sure you've got a high quality sleeping bag. You will not regret it when you're trying to get a good night's sleep or just a few hours sleep in a very cold night. So that about wraps up the video. It's a pretty long one. I want to try and cover as much as I could for you guys. I hope that's answered some of your questions about what kit to take, what I take to a Milsim. If you have any further questions, do leave them down in the comment section below. And if you do want to see more advice and kind of tips videos like this, tutorials, tell me down there as well. If you did enjoy this video, of course, don't forget to leave it a like. But in the meantime, guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.